Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant cardiologist and uh, over the past few months I've been doing a lot of work with um, people who suffer from palpitations and um, one of the common problems I face is that people get palpitation and then um, uh, they, they seek help but by that time the palpitations have gone and um, because the palpitations have gone they have an ECG, the ECG comes out as normal and therefore then none the wiser as to what the palpitations were and they're then told by their doctor well wait till you have your next set of palpitations and then we'll do some monitoring the problem with palpitations are that they can the problem with palpitations is that they can come on at any time and often not when it's convenient to be monitored so today i thought i'd do a little video on how you can diagnose the cause of your palpitations yourself by careful observation okay uh, and it's generally quite easy. Now, um, the, the first thing to say is that it's important to understand what palpitations is, okay, what palpitations are. A palpitation is essentially an awareness of your heartbeat to the point that it feels abnormal or worries you, okay? Uh, so you can be aware of your heartbeat, but if it feels abnormal or if, if it starts worrying you, then that's what a palpitation is. That doesn't mean that your heartbeat is abnormal. It means that it just seems abnormal to you. So palpitations can be caused by completely normal heartbeats, but can also be caused by abnormal heartbeats. And there are certain features which may help you distinguish between normal and abnormal when you're having them uh, uh, at that time. Uh, it is very important to tell you, though, that if you feel very unwell with the palpitations, okay, if you are feeling hideously unwell, if you are clammy, if you're getting chest pains, if you are uh, blacking out with the palpitations, please, 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 the best thing is to call an ambulance and come into a hospital. However, a lot of people get palpitations and it worries them, but they don't feel unwell with the palpitations, okay? In the, and so this video is for those people. Say you're lying in bed, you start noticing it, and you say, hmm, that's not right. What's going on? And they and you notice them more and more, but you're not unwell, unwell with them, but they just worry you. So this video is for those people, all right? So and there's a few things to point out here, okay? When whenever you're dealing with palpitations, there are a few things you should pay attention to. Uh, number one, how they start. Do they start suddenly or gradually? Okay. Number two, when they're happening, do they feel regular or irregular? Number three, when they're happening, how fast is your heart rate? When this is obviously easily done by feeling your pulse. So you put your fingers on your wrist like this, you feel your pulse and you count over 15 seconds, multiply whatever number you've counted by four and that will tell you your pulse rate. Okay, so it's important to do that. And then finally to see how they go away. Do they go away suddenly or do they go away gradually? And those are the four features I would look for when I'm trying to work out what my palpitations are. So as long as you pay attention to those four features, it'll help you considerably to try and work out why you're getting palpitations. So let's get started, okay? So the first thing to say is the palpitations can happen from anywhere. Okay, and the way the heart works is that you have the pacemaker, the sinoatrial node, which is where all your pulses are usually generated. Uh, and then from there, the pulse goes down the two chambers at the top called the atria. And then from there, the impulse goes down to the atrioventricular node and then down to the ventricles. And if your palpitations start from any, if, you, if an impulse is released from any of those points, that can cause palpitations. So uh, how palpitations are defined or how they're named is dependent on where they have started, where they're being generated, where the abnormal impulse or the normal impulse is being generated. So let me tap out a few things that can call that and then I'll talk about them, all right? Say you're lying in bed, all right, and you notice this. Okay, so this is something which is gradual, okay? It's gradual and it goes away gradually. But when it's happening, it's more noticeable. It doesn't feel fast, okay? It feels regular. So gradual onset, gradual offset, regular and not fast. And by that I mean 
with a rate between 60 and 100. If the heart rate is between 60 and 100, then that's normal. Anything below 100 should be fine. So that is probably likely to be sinus rhythm, normal sinus rhythm. That is a normal a heartbeat okay everyone uh, most people would you know have sinus rhythm which means that the the impulse is being produced in the sinoatrial node or the pacemaker and it's being conducted downwards however even sinus rhythm at a normal rate can be felt as palpitation because if you are lying there and you're very worried and you pay attention to your heart you could notice this and it may feel abnormal and the heart may feel like it's jumping out of your chest because it's beating a lot, lot louder but that is probably sinus rhythm, all right? Then there is something like this, all right? Here we go. So here, it was a gradual onset, the heart was regular, but it was fast, and then the offset was gradual, all right? So, Gradual onset, fast, gradual offset, but regular throughout. That is sinus tachycardia. Sinus tachycardia is what happens when we exercise. It is just your normal heart which, uh, beat, which is being produced in the right place, but it's going faster. Now, that is usually in response to something like adrenaline. Um, so, for example, if you're stressed or if you're anxious or if you're going through a marital breakup or if you're selling house and you're lying in the middle of the night and you start getting this, this is probably sinus tachycardia. Gradual onset, gradual offset, um, fast and the heart rate is usually above 100 beats per minute, but usually it doesn't go over 160. So it should be, you know, 100, 120 beats per minute. Uh, that's sinus tachycardia. Again, a harmless heart rhythm. It is not dangerous. It is a normal response to something else happening in the body, not a problem with your heart. Some people talk about this. So what this is, again... This is regular, but, but the gaps may be slightly interspersed, okay? So they're not exactly the same, whereas a normal rhythm is completely regular. You can have a little bit of irregularity. That is called sinus arrhythmia. And that's a completely normal phenomena and occurs because of breathing variation. So again, it feels relatively regular, but not completely uh, regular. The heart is not particularly going fast. Uh, that is sinus arrhythmia. So those are normal heart rhythms, all right? Then you can have something like this. Um, Misbeat, thud, 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 and then goes away. That is probably a PAC, a premature atrial complex, okay? So that impulse is not being produced in your sinus node. It's not being produced in your pacemaker, but somewhere else. That can ha happen in people who have, usually who have lung disease, uh, but can also happen sometimes normally. All right. Uh, and this by far is something that is the most common cause of anxiety for a lot of people. They'll be lying in bed and they'll notice one and they get more and more stressed. This is not dangerous. This is a premature atrial complex. It's not dangerous. The heart thuds, um, misses and then thuds. OK, this is a completely normal thing. It's your brain that is making you notice this a bit more. It should settle. It does not indicate any major issues. All right. Um, provided you do not have any evidence of structural heart disease from before, all right? Then you can have something like this. See that? That was sudden onset of the palpitation. The heart is going fast, it's going regular, and then it, the offset is sudden, all right? And the heart rate, would be around about 120 or 130 beats per minute. That is an atrial tachycardia, okay? 
that's an atrial tachycardia. Again, it's not very dangerous, but it, can, it is a heart rhythm disturbance, and it is amenable to cure by an ablation. So it's not a dangerous heart rhythm, but it can be inconvenient, and it is an abnormal heart rhythm. All right. So if you have an atrial tachycardia, um, you know you don't. It, it's it's just something that is worth getting checked out because they can become more and more inconvenient over time, and therefore it's best to get it sorted. But it's not dangerous. Then here's another one you can get, okay? This is very similar to the previous rhythm, except that when you count the heartbeat, uh, the heartbeat usually is around about 150, all right? And that is called atrial flutter. So it's faster than the atrial tachycardia, it is a little bit more dangerous than the atrial tachycardia because in atrial flutter, what happens is the heart beat leaps. So it leaps in multiples. So it can be 75 and then suddenly it'll go up to 150 and then it can go up to, you know, uh, higher multiples. And therefore, atrial flutter is more poorly tolerated than atrial tachycardia. The other thing to say is in atrial flutter, the atria are just fluttering, are not very effective. And therefore, this condition can over a number of years be associated with strokes. And therefore, if you're above the age of 70, 65, if you're diabetic, if you have high blood pressure, if you've had previous strokes, if you have heart failure or anything like that, then it's a good idea to be on blood thinning medications for atrial flutter. Again, this is something that is amenable to treatment. It can be cured um, by an ablation, all right? Then you have another condition. And in this, what happens is this. That is called atrial fibrillation. Sudden onset, sudden offset, very fast and irregular. Now that is not dangerous except for the risk of strokes in the long run. So if you have atrial fibrillation, yes, it's inconvenient, etc. As long as someone has stratified your risk, calculated what your risk of stroke is, and put you on blood thinning medication, nothing else needs to be done. So those are your atrial rhythms, all right? Uh, and what I will do is, in my next series, talk about how to diagnose the supraventricular and ventricular rhythms. So I hope this was useful. Uh, this is me. And this is my Facebook page, if it works, and my Twitter, and this is my website. So all the best, and I'll see you soon to do the second part. Thanks.